And he just goes, ah, 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 ah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Grand Arena Coliseum, where it's a little bit spooky out there. It's Halloween right around the corner, and today we're going to be unlocking your deepest and darkest nightmares. I'm talking not messing around with Darth Nihilus. And don't screw around with Barisofi. And on top of that, in today's Grand Arena highlights, we're going to be showing probably, at least in my experience, to my recollection, a world record for most damage I've seen Lord Vader dish out in Grand Arena. You know what to do, people. Hit that like button, subscribe, all that other stuff. And let's get on into the action. Folks, we got a two, four, one Grand Arena special for you guys today. We are in the second week of our Grand Arena 5v5 experience. And, well, things are getting a little wild out there. Out on the hollow table, as we're about to see today, in our first round of second week Grand Arena, we have Ted Hay, or is it Ted G? I don't know, whatever it might be. T-E-R-J-E's our opponent here. Let's give him a round of applause and show you what we got going on. So people, if you've caught our Grand Arenas from the last week, we had this conversation how it feels like, you know, if you want to get the most out of Lord Vader right now, don't use him as the lead. Unless there's a data cron, Lord Vader's just kind of underwhelming. But if you use him with Treya lead, things get a little bit more interesting as we're going to see both on offense and defense today. Number one, check this out. Well, actually, yeah, whatever, we'll get to it in a second. Now, as you can see, up against my opponent here, Lord Vader Treya got us a hold. As you know, or you don't know, maybe, when you do Treya lead with Lord Vader, it pretty much shuts down Fennec and it shuts down Bo-Katan. Well, now let's go take a look at our offensive gameplay against Saturday and tell you what's gonna be happening later on. First battle up against Saturday, Saturday, I don't know, whatever the Mr. T we're gonna call him right now. It's the Supreme Leader Kylo Red versus the Great Mother. Listen, folks, don't you dare forget for one second where the bastion of knowledge came to take down the great mothers of Supreme Leader Cub, and that's right, Archiver Club, Archiver Empire, made it happen, my friends. I mean, look, we have this down to a science. If I can give one tip besides, well, <laughs> Kylo Ren and Mask Elite, number one, an attack or data crime makes things a lot easier, and preferably a turn meter thing on level three would be very nice, but there's a fourth tip that I see a lot of people screw up. Don't bring in the Red Lobster, Sith Trooper, because the attacks out of turns cause a lot of problems. They heal up, they get retribution, whatever the heck the Data Crown has to offer, don't bring it in. You just want to have pure turn, neater, roll, baby, roll. Nice wins, baby. That's how we take care of the Great Mothers. Hopefully we have a good solution once this Data Crown kind of goes away, because it makes things a lot easier with the double attacks from Kylo. Next up, folks, we have... Luthen versus Leia, 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 Leia. I had a hot take the other day in Grand Arena, and I'm going to bring it up here. I honestly think, although we, it feels like it's the correct thing to say, that Commander Tano is like the top three conquest unit. Maul is as well. I don't know, man. This year has been bangalicious when it comes to our conquests. I mean, just take a look at Luthen. So far, we've been using Luthen consistently. This Grand Arena up against Leia, and you don't need the Data Crown to make it happen. We were dunking on Leia even pre Data Crown. The fact that I could do this with a team that a lot of people already have free to play Mon Mothma, that's a big deal here. And even when things got a little south in a, a little bit later, Grand Arena, we're still pulling off wins. I'm telling you, I'm starting to think. Give me some more time because Luthen's still a little bit new on the radar. I think I would take Gluthen over Commander Tano if I had the rank him. I'm sorry. I know, I, I know, I know, I know. But you know, you gotta hear me out here. Next battle, my friend. We got ourselves Bo-Katan versus the Gungans. Oh my gosh. Bo-Katan versus Gungans. Gungans are so annoying. Luckily, their Datacron has gone to the wayside, but they are still darn annoying. They just go, ah, 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 ah. Oh, just between the sound effects and all the debuffs, I go crazy. It took us forever to get a play going. I finally got the play and I won. I don't want to talk about this battle anymore. I'm sick of Gungans. Okay, it's fine. Next up, we have Enoch versus 
General Anakin Skywalker. I did this battle in response to someone in my Kyber Club. They were in the chat saying, oh, don't bring Enoch against Gas, because Gas came critically hit. Gas has anti reva <laughs> None of which are a problem for Enoch. It was pretty much impossible for General Anakin Skywalker to land critical hits. And Enoch zombies, they don't revive. They get all the stupid decay, which is a little bit better than a revive because you don't got to die to come back to life. It's kind of like it, but it's really not. They're not fully dead. They're just a little bit dead here. I love Enoch. It's a fun team. Is it like meta breaking? No. But man, I've been having a ton of fun. And even without Data Crowns, I know we always sometimes think it's Data Crowns. Enoch literally dunks on Skywalker for breakfast, lunch, dinner, second lunch. What, 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 how much do though those hobbits eat? I don't know. Love this battle. Enoch taking it home here. And now we have Queen Amidala versus Rey, Shadow Legend. Now, I had a little bit of an oopsie going into this week of Grand Raiders. Somehow, Gary messed up my mods. I was missing mods on Kamara and a little bit of mods on Queen Amidala. But luckily, it's not going to be a problem here. Queen Amidala relies on mostly Terminator to kind of get her moving. And plus, we have the pre-taunt with the handmaiden decoy. And more importantly, yeah, uh, Padawan Obi-Wan just lays down some massive damage. So overall, I can't complain. We're locking things in here with Queen Amidala. Mods or not, we're taking this home, baby. Nice, solid win for Queen Amidala. And then we got ourselves Shorty versus Saw Gorilla. You know what I mean? This has been a favorite team of mine for the past couple seasons here. With this data crown, it's gonna be going away soon, but man, nothing feels as good as just letting Dark Trooper just feed off all of the buffs that are being shared with Shorty and the droids. And eventually, when it's Dark Trooper's turn, you say hello to my little friend. I go, Nuking the entire Saw Gerrera lineup. <laughs> oh, enjoy this while you can, people. I hope you're able to use this this particular season because those support data crowns, they're going to go bye-bye and we're probably not going to get much action out of that anymore. And then we had ourselves Jedi Master Luke versus Dark Malgus. Now, Dark Malgus, a little bit annoying right now. You know, he's got grit crons. They have the tank crons. Those are going to be going away soon. Tank revive crons. I, uh, I, I, you know, I... <laughs> This is a little bit of an annoying battle, you know, because I kind of accidentally misused Cal Kestis' insta-kill. I kind of used it a little bit too early, and then I kind of had to get through Dark Malgus the old-fashioned way. As you're going to see later on in a future Grand Arena here, spoiler, the very next that we're going to be talking about momentarily here, I would just get rid of Malgus first. Don't use any insta-kills. Just use your raw damage from the assist. Clow Data Crown's pretty banger with Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. And then once Malik is dead, he gets revived by the Datacron. Then you use Cal's insta-kill to take out Darth Malgus, and then you work on Malik later on. I actually think I got it right. Malik versus Malgus. Sometimes I still mix them up by accident. <laughs> Nonetheless, took us a long time, but don't worry. Papa Arnold got the job done. Jedi Master Luke coming up top. Oh, I know I'm mad. I'm really mad. We have Maul versus Calrim back. Or more importantly, Bass! Maul has been lining up the Jedi and bada bang, bada boom, getting him out of my room. But we've been mostly seeing Keller and Beck with Eth Koth, which is great. But we have Barris Data Crown, which is the Data Crown from the previous season. And uh, it's been a minute since I fought Barris Crown, especially with Keller and Beck. And the team felt like pretty much unkillable for Maul. And yeah, I got nothing done and Maul lost on me. His win streak versus Keller and Beck just got knocked down and i'm really mad because i had 20 million other teams i could use here but i trusted maul and you know what he did with my trust yeah he threw it away i'm mad at him maul is getting me ticked off and you know i'm gonna say it just because i'm mad i think luthan might be better than maul i mean he is better than maul the luthan team does way more than maul to lawrence <sighs> i'm pretty fired up here but don't worry you know who isn't a trash conquest unit bang versus calorum Ben. you know the cut maul a little bit of slack this was a little scary for, for Bane as well. Uh, the team was super durable. There was just way too much. Force that, force that here, force that there. Ah, super annoying. But eventually, we're able to work them through. But man, was it close. Because especially Mace Windu landing those shatter points on Bane when Bane was by himself. That's not a good situation to be in. Thank goodness we had a high held data crown to really make sure Bane can get across the finish line. We did. Bane was able to avenge Maul. But man, Maul, you let me down, bud. You <laughs> let me down again, right? Right? <laughs> you better hope not. Next up, we have Afra versus whatever the heck this team was here. Admiral Trent stunts bench. Oh! You know, this Grand Arena right here is all about characters and teams that are a little bit less low. 
I try to give him some love. I try to get him on that hollow table, even though there's a bajillion other teams that are just way better for the situation. Maul let me down. Afra's not gonna let me down, surely, right? No! We ended up losing against Trench because Afra couldn't land a freaking doubt on Admiral Trench. If you don't land doubt on Trench, at least currently with this Data Crown set, it's pretty much game over at that point. I mean, what the heck? We have like full potency sets on Afra. How do you miss out on this? Uh, nonetheless, that was the Grand Arena right there. Our opponent only dropped one battle. We dropped two because of characters that I'm trying to give love. They let us down. Failure! Let's just get on to the next Grand Arena where we have Lord Koji. All right, people. When we cracked open this Grand Arena, we saw that our legend, galactic legend, Leia Organa was holding down for us. A lot of hold that we were getting here. I was liking this. And we got to start cracking open our opponent's team, where the first battle that we got to use was, well, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren versus the Grey Mothers. Now, this did not have Baron. You know, I mean, pretty much the core staple of the Great Mothers team as well, the Great Mothers, and then, you know, uh, Morgan Elsbeth. The other stuff I've been seeing, we see a lot in circulation. We see Marin in there if you're willing to break up the Mother Talzin team, where Marin kind of helps the team be a little bit more durable, has some cleanses, all that other fun jazz we see. For example, here, Knights is their spirit. You see that? You know, the Acolyte, the spirit, Knights, Knight Trooper, you know, that Trooper, Peridia. We got a lot of ways of handling it, but let me tell you, I haven't found anything that stops Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. When we're moving, we're moving. Look at that. Max Banner win. <laughs> Life is good, my friends. Nice, solid win. And now we move on to, again, Queen Amidala versus Raid Shadow Legends, Legends, Legends. Uh, again, missing some mods on Queen Amidala, but it don't matter. We have Coruscant Underworld Police here. And when you got Coruscant Underworld Police here, you're getting stuff done. We're getting the job done, my friends. So much damage on this team right here. So much durability to Queen Amidala team. Again, just like my conversation with Luthen, I feel like especially this year, Conquest students, they're all so good. I don't know, you know, again, let me give it a few more months because, you know, they're still kind of new. Of course, they got to be good. Not always, you know, Trench was... Trench was amazing. What am I talking about? Trench is the best, right? Most underrated Conquest student. Anyways, all I'm trying to say is that I feel like Queen Amidala, things like Luthen should be taking precedence over Maul and Commander Tana. Yes, they don't have Omicrons, but this is so much better. I mean... <sighs> You know, give me a couple more months. Maybe I'll finally solidify. But right now, I'm getting the thoughts that Queen Amidala, Luthen, probably should start taking over the spots for uh, Commander Tano and Maul. And this, speaking of which, let's go move on to Luthen versus Galactic Legend Leia. I love this counter. And today really proved, even when things are starting to get a little hairy, we're able to come back into action and get stuff done. We had a quadruple tank here with a tank data cross. Stormtrooper Han, Old Ben, Baze, Leia. So you gotta be careful because Baze and Ben, they have to passive turn meter gains. And with us attacking out of turn, Ben kind of got out there and messed things up a little bit for us. When they got out there, Leia hit me with a big log. We got ourselves days. Luckily, they didn't put Drogon here. They moved Drogon somewhere else out there. So luckily, they didn't have that much damage. We were the bounce back, dropped the days, and we were back on track. We were rolling, 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 rolling over this Galactic Legend Leia team. And again, leading with Max Banners. I mean, and again, this is not technically Datacron specific. Yeah, it's a lot better than Datacron, but it's not, you don't need it. This is what I'm saying. Luthen, uh, Queen Amidala, that's great. Maul and Kamaritano, they're kind of one-trick ponies right now. Again, I know coming from me, I love the, guy, the characters, but man, it's just, these are kind of better. So good. All right, we move on, people, where we have General Anakin Skywalker versus Saw Gerrera. Here is the Drogon, but there was no Luthen on this line up here. And uh, yeah, Gas basically counter attacked these fools to, <laughs> to smithereens, to the netherworld. Of course, though, <laughs> Saw Gerrera had to be salty, steal a banner from me last second. Uh, thanks, you jerk. Nonetheless, Gas gave Saw Gerrera what was due to him. And then the rebels went on to whatever afterlife they had. All I know is that the next battle we have is yet again, Enoch versus General Anakin Skywalker. Same deal, different team, a little bit better. I was actually able to get out there a lot sooner before the Captain Rex went off, and I was like, all right, the damage is nuts. The Blight student thing, we can't be critically hit. And then when Stormtrooper taunts, oh boy, it's so good. Because when Stormtrooper's moving turn meter, well, you're triggering the Blight because it's turn meter removal, and you're causing passive damage. So it's kind of weird seeing Gary actually be somewhat useful out there in the field, except just being a face to punch. And trust me, takes for the no one. I like to punch Gary quite a lot. Nonetheless, loving my gas. Enoch battles that I'm doing right now. 
And I just wonder, there's got to be more for those Enochs down the road with those Imperial Remnants, huh? I wonder, if they're not getting a rework on Thrawn at the minimum, what a big missed opportunity. we got to move on, folks, where now we have the front wall cleared off, and now we're going to try to give Maul a little bit of a redemption arc. But let him try again. He let me down last time. We're bringing him back. We have Maul versus Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, I should have known. Maul and Qui-Gon, they got history. I thought we could squash it out right now. He had the he, Maul owed me a favor for screwing up, number one. And number two, he needs a little bit of revenge on uh, Qui-Gon. Let's make it happen. Well, guess what? Well, it didn't work. Because guess what? He, the stupid, what's his face? The, the Eve Koth Datacron forced him to taunt, which took my attention away from Jedi Knight Anakin. And Anakin decided to nuke us the smithereens. So Maul, you lost twice back to back against Jedi. Yeah, you're a God. I'm really disappointed in all. Let me down twice this season. Oh, man. Oh, man. Back to back, too. But you know what? We now move on, folks, to where we have Master Luke versus Darth Malgus. Here, I learned my lesson from the previous Grand Arena here. We got to better use our insta-kill with Jedi Cal Kestis. Luckily, there was no Bastla shot falling here, so we didn't have to worry about her kind of being annoyance here. Again, what we did here differently... It worked out a lot faster than the previous one. Now, you know, again, we won last time, but this is a little bit easier. If you're going up against a tank, revive Malgus. Make sure you... I would kill off Malik first. He's a little bit easier to kill off than your Darth Malgus. Then once you kill off Malgus manually, you know, just by calling assist on him, then Cal ends the kill on Darth Malgus, then he can't revive. It, it's kind of annoying that they don't have an anti-revive on Jedi Cal Kestis. I feel like they did that on purpose because they knew he was going to counter Malgus. And they just wanted to make sure that they could release a Datacron to make Malgus, you know, viable again up against Jedi Cal Kestis. But nonetheless, got the job done. Again, Plo Datacron, really, really good right now. Use it on so many different lineups. I like using Master Luke. Calling him to assist of Master Luke. Yeah, you're getting a lot of extra bonus damage. And then we have ourselves Dr. Aphra versus... Finn and the Resistance. Okay, Afra owed me some love. Again, I didn't need to use Afra. I had other stuff, but I wanted to give her a chance at redemption because she let me down. And as you can see, it wasn't looking good, my friends. We had a rough start. Again, if we're not getting enough doubt out there, they're just going to roll us. So luckily, eventually, you know, even though things looked horrible here, things are going rough. The Resistance are rolling over me. Luckily, the damage unity thing on the data card or whatever it was keeping us alive. And we were able to bounce a comeback here. And then, as you can see, old Papa Arnold had to just kind of guide Afra out there. And we were able to get the win. So Afra redeemed us. <laughs> redeemed herself, I should say. But at what cost? A lot of banners. It's unfortunate. I love my Afra, but man, I feel like she's like the biggest character that's gotten screwed so bad by Data Crons. And then we have Tuskens versus Anakin Skywalker. You know, I heard Anakin uh, killed all the men, the women too, and the children. Yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> you know, what goes around goes around goes the other way. Back and People who listen to Justin Timberlake anymore, man, that song was hot. You know, that was the first song I bought on my iPod Nano. Yeah, that was, I, I still remember my first song on my iPod Nano. What was your first song you guys bought for your iPod? For those that had iPods, which is most of you guys. Most of you guys are in my age bracket out there. Anyways, uh, yeah, Tuskens took out Jedi Anakin. And uh, yeah, let me say, the Tuskens are going to make sure they take care of all of Anakin's lineage. They're going to go for the women and the children, too, in the Skywalker saga. That would be a funny story. I would totally see that as a spin-off. Tales of the Tuskens. <laughs> Okay, now we have <laughs> a big oopsie. We have Darth Bane versus Treya Lord Vader. And here we go. The memo's getting out there. That Treya Lord Vader is an interesting combo to put together. Well, I am pretty sure this would have worked. But, you know, the second I did this, I realized, oh, yeah, that's not a good idea. You know, so better late than never, I suppose. So I don't do it next time, but... um. Yeah, Darth Bane got insta-killed. And when I put Sith Assassin under stealth, yeah, I, I realized pretty much a second it was a bad idea. If you are going to do this, because I'm going to suspect we're going to see this more and more and more, Darth Bane should work. Just bring in a pre-talk. Sith Empire Trooper could be good because you're doing so much damage. You're going to trigger the uh, unique ability on Treya, which it pretty much gives you an insta-kill on Nihilus. Yeah, not good. Kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Whoops, that was a little scary. But we got to see this in our Jabba versus... Uh, I don't know what happened. It felt like I preloaded the team. It, it was nasty. Again, you know, I'm not that... I'm a little crazy, but I'm not that crazy. This team is, like, 
this is way more threatening than Lord Vader lead. One trillion percent. I can't just throw bow. Can't just throw Fennec. And my Jabba was getting dismantled. And remember, we turned off the Omicron on Treya. And we still were getting manhandled here. I mean, boom, insta-kill. And they're eating me. And cooldown increases. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? But here's the kicker. Check this out. Put this in slow-mo. Because I rarely ever see Lord Vader hit for more than 5,000 on a crit. Lord Vader, because of primarily the data crown, of course, of Shreya. And the support crown, whatever. He hit Jabba for 500,000 damage. I don't know. If we keep seeing this. If this is the new era of Lord Vader, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, go check out our previous video where we kind of talked about it a little bit more. Lord Vader might be a serious contender now. That's, this is nuts. <laughs> but then, don't worry. General Grievous got into the battle versus Darth Treya. Now that Treya lead is gone, we don't got to worry about all that shenanigans out there. We can pack out a turn, all that no penalty. General Grievous with the staff, put a staff to the madness here. Able to nuke out everyone pretty quickly and able to work down that Lord Vader. Only downside about Lord Vader Treya, he doesn't work his ultimate as quickly. And we were able to get the healing immunity on him and put him down. Pretty impressed lately with Lord Vader and Trey. I'm not going to lie. And now because of how expensive that Trey battle was, we have ourselves Gideon versus the Gungans. Now here was here's what I was trying to do. You know, last season when we had the pre-nerfed Gideon Datacron, you were pretty much able to solo the Gungans with just Gideon himself. Well, I haven't had any experience with the nerf data crown. I'm like, all right, this seems to be an opportunity. I'm holding on defense a little bit here. And uh, yeah, it didn't work nearly as well here. We got absolutely dunked. My scout trooper got wrecked right away. Maybe a scout trooper survived. We could have been okay, but scout trooper got nuked out of existence here. And uh, yeah, kind of a problem. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't do it again though. But here's what we ended up doing. We brought Bo-Katan versus Gungans. Yeah, I don't wanna, I'm just getting really tired about talking about the Gungans. They're, they're kind of an annoying team. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I, that's it. That's the summary of the freaking battle. I, yes, okay, we won. <laughs> and then speaking of Bo, we have Star Killer versus Bo Katan. So now I was kind of running short on the roster, and I was like, ah, oh, what do I got left over? We had Star Killer, and you know what? I was able to get out there. And I was able to roll my turn meter engine, and they didn't really get many turns. I wish I brought an attacker data, because I would have made this way easier. I brought Vesis, uh, you know, and, uh, but the Vesis crown wasn't really doing much. It took us a while, but we are able to get the job done. Nice win, so my nice. friends. Got me out of a tight situation, and now that brings us to shift. Where people, this is probably going to be, you know, uh, the last week before things get interesting. Next week, we got the punishing one. And uh, speaking of the punishing one, I don't know. Are we going to do this again? Negotiator versus the executor? Again, easy money. I don't got to talk too much about the old way of negotiator handling the uh, executor. My question is, now that Dangar's here, I'm going to be seeing a lot of seven stars, probably really like seven, eight, nine Dangar's fleets out there. Is negotiator still going to win? My preliminary testing as three stars suggests we should. <laughs> We're going to have to wait, people. Then the next battle we had after this was Chimera versus Negotiator. Yeah, uh, is there much to talk about? When you're running that blue man group team here, you're running a turn meter engine, you're stunning, you're getting so much resilient defense. <laughs> Easy, I, I got nothing to add here. And then lastly, we have the love ones versus Holdo. Ah, you know, this Holdo's actually kind of annoying if she's on defense with someone that, like me who puts all the good stuff on the and then it's, so it basically is, I would like to have Chimera versus Holdo, for example. But when I got to use Holdo, Chimera versus Negotiator, you know, Holdo gets a little dicey. I could malevolence or finalize, which, oh, it works. It's, it's a little it. messy. We got the job done. Final score, people. Here's what we got. Up against Lord Koji, we got 1735 versus 1398. Leia was holding strong. Four holds for Leia on defense. They were able to clear that front wall. However, they got to the back wall, and guess what? Yeah, Boss Nass was holding strong. I know he's annoying, but he gets the job done. Gungans are a good back wall defense because, you know, after the front, the opponent might be running a skinny roster, and, uh, yeah, we got work done today, people. Good job on the defense. Maul, I'm a little disappointed in you, bud. And that's going to wrap it up for today, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans, and all you fantastic droids out there. Thank you for stopping by. Again, I'm hoping you're enjoying these Grand Arena highlights because, man... Grand Arena is the heart and soul of Galaxy of Heroes IMO Yo. Leave that like, comment down below, subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And always remember, it's great to be in the Empire.
today. Oh, it's great to be in the Empire today. But the sun never sets.